Hello and welcome to my first lecture on electrochemistry. Uh, we're going to do the introductory uh, theoretical background to the unit today. Of course, these are Alberta Learning's knowledge outcomes. Um, they're the, the, the concepts the province wants you to master, and they also form the basis for the bulk of the diploma exam questions that you'll see. Electrochemical reactions involve the transfer of electrons from one atom or one element to another. Um, they're also extremely common, both in living and non-living systems. For example, photosynthesis and cellular respiration are both redox reactions, so is corrosion and combustion. They're commonly called, uh, I think I referred to them as redox reactions, they're also commonly referred to as oxidation reaction rea reduction reactions. Most metals exist in their oxidized states in nature, for example, uh, iron 3 oxide and copper 2 oxide. Um, if, more importantly, you have to get your head around this notion that in this state they exist as positive ions locked up in a ionic crystal lattice with oxygen. If you think ion, when you see the ionic compound, it, it, you're, you're ahead of the game in this unit. We call these materials ores and we dig them out of the ground and take them through a, what's called a reduction process to turn them back into their atomic metal form, their elemental form. Essentially what we're doing is we're giving them back the electrons that oxygen has stripped from them. And historically then, oxidation, oxidation meant to be bound up to oxygen. We now define it to be a process whereby a metal is stripped of its electrons. Um, and again, electrochemical reactions involve the transfer of electrons from one metal element to another. Fundamentally, that's what we're talking about. Only a very few metals in nature, such as silver, gold, and platinum, exist as neutral atoms in their natural state, in nature. And they're neutral atoms because they're highly resistant to oxidation. Because of this, we see gold used in very expensive electronics, such as that found on satellites or in airbags. We refer to this short list of metals as noble metals because of their resistance to oxidation. Metallurgy is the general science of extracting metals from their naturally occurring compounds, which are mostly the oxides, and then applying these metals to other purpose. Copper and bronze were among the first metals to be smelted in such a method using simple wood fires. Smelting is the process of reducing a metal back to its atomic state from its ionic form. Later, iron and steel were smelted uh, using higher temperatures, and still later, aluminum, requiring the application of electric current. Historically, the term reduction was used to describe this process, whereby a pure metal was produced from its compounds. For example, iron was reduced uh, from iron 3 oxide by carbon monoxide. So here's the iron 3 oxide, and it's being reduced into elemental iron, and the reducing agent is the carbon monoxide. This, this remains a very important industrial reducing agent. Um, the carbon monoxide, we call it the reducing agent. And reducing agents promote the reduction of a, uh, of a metal compound into an elemental metal. Two further examples are here. We have tin 4 oxide being reduced by charcoal into pure tin, and copper 2 sulfide being reduced by hydrogen gas into pure copper. Again, the charcoal and the hydrogen are important industrial reducing agents, along with the carbon monoxide. For our purposes in this unit, uh, conceptually, we have to focus on the fact we're going from an ionic uh, species, uh, so an ionic metal, to its neutral atom. That is the process of reducing a metal, of smelting a metal. And we now define reduction as a process of gaining electrons. And it's sort of counterintuitive. Reduction should be uh, should amount to gaining anything. But if you think about it uh, in terms of a reduction gaining negative charge, it's um, logically consistent. Of course, the oxidation of metals is the chemical opposite of reduction. It's the process whereby metals are returned to their oxidized states. Historically, we confined oxidation reactions to the reaction of a metal with oxygen, but we now include reaction of metals with other materials that are also capable of oxidizing the metal, of stripping electrons off the metal. So, for example, here's the classical uh, example of magnesium being oxidized by oxygen. 
But then we have two further examples. Here the aluminum is being oxidized by chlorine gas. So a neutral atom is being oxidized into the aluminum uh, 3 plus ion. And here we have the example of copper uh, being oxidized by bromine into the copper 2 ion. Um, for our purposes, most importantly, uh, it's important to recognize that the metals are going from their neutral atom into an ionic compound. And these reactions are generally classified as redox reactions, and the agent promoting the oxidation is the oxidizing agent. So in this example, the oxygen, the chlorine, and the bromine are the oxidizing agents. So we've layered on a whole new language to describe chemical reactions. The slow motion oxidation of a metal is called corrosion, but we also need to understand it conceptually as an oxidation. Combustion is in fact the rapid oxidation of a metal. And here's again our, our oxidation of, of iron, either on a slow or a rapid basis. Same chemical process. For our purposes, the neutral iron atom, sorry I lost my mouse, is being converted into the iron 3 ion. Single replacement reactions like this one are a simple model to explain and understand redox systems. Um, and we apply a method called a half reaction method to understand what's going on in these systems. So let's look at the example of placing zinc into hydrochloric acid. The overall reaction looks like this. Now we can pull this apart into a full ionic equation, which looks like this. So the hydrogen chloride is being pulled apart into the hydrogen ion and the chloride ion. And the zinc chloride is being pulled apart into the zinc ion and the chloride ion. You'll notice that the chloride ion goes in and out, and it's unchanged chemically. So we cancel that out. We call it a spectator ion, and we cancel that out. So what's left then is to uh, determine what's going on with the zinc as it goes through the reaction and what's going on with the hydrogen as it goes through a reaction. So let's look at that on the next page. Um, we'll look at the zinc initially and then we'll look at the hydrogen through this half reaction method and we'll get a sense of uh, an electron being lost by one species being gained by another. So in, the example, in this example, the zinc atoms are being converted to zinc ions. Uh, while hydrogen ions are being converted to hydrogen atoms. And that looks like this. The zinc is being converted to zinc ions by losing two electrons. And the hydrogen is being converted to hydrogen atoms. The hydrogen ion is being converted to hydrogen atoms by gaining an electron, one per atom. And that's spelled out here. Each zinc atom loses two electrons. Each hydrogen ion gains one electron. So we add the electrons to the half reactions, and they look like this. A zinc atom generates a zinc ion plus two electrons. So that is our oxidation half reaction. Two hydrogen ions plus two electrons give us a molecule of hydrogen composed of two neutral atoms. So there's our reduction half reaction. And again, oxidation, loss of electrons, reduction, gain of electrons. We can add these two half reactions back together and we get a balanced redox reaction that looks like this. And again, we're casting out the electrons, coming out on one side, going in on the other, and it leaves us a net redox reaction. And you'll notice this is very different than the single replacement reaction we started with. In this example, um, and in all examples, spectator ions are eliminated. And from a redox perspective, the zinc atom loses electrons to the hydrogen ion. It's being reduced Sorry, it is reducing the hydrogen ion while itself being oxidized by the hydrogen ion. This makes the zinc atom the reducing agent and the hydrogen ion the oxidizing agent. And this is typical. There always, there's always an oxidation paired with a reduction, and there's also a reducing there's always a reducing agent paired with an oxidizing agent. This is typical for all redox reactions. And again, note the balanced redox equation is not the single replacement reaction. We're trying to explain what's happening to electrons and the, the movement of electrons in these reactions. We're, we're disposing of any species that's just a spectator in the system. And again, you'll note that we cancel the electrons to, um, to balance them out. And that's typical. The number of electrons being generated by the oxidation has to equal the number of electrons being consumed by the reduction. 
If it doesn't, then you haven't properly balanced your system. So here's another uh, example involving single replacement reaction between silver nitrate and solid copper. So here's the non-ionic equation. In grade 10, this would have been the single replacement reaction. The copper is replacing the silver in the compound and free silver atoms are being released. Um, if we blow this up into a total ionic system, I'm sorry, we're going half reactions. What we do here is we pull down the silver and you'll notice that in silver nitrate, this silver exists as a plus one ion. On the reactant side, we're dealing with the silver ion. On the product side, we're dealing with the neutral, neutral silver atom. And to go from the ion to the atom, we have to add one electron per atom, two electrons in total. So that's our reduction half reaction. We'll now pull down the copper on the left as a neutral atom. On the right, though, it's a copper two ion. And you'll notice to go from copper to copper two, two electrons are being removed from the atom, and they're shown here. So there's the oxidation half reaction. And of course, electrons going into the reduction and coming out of the oxidation cancel, and we're left with a balanced redox reaction. Two silver ions react with one copper atom to produce two silver atoms and one copper two ion. So building the half reactions and then an overall redox reaction from an equation is relatively straightforward. Here's, a, here's the same example. We use the non-ionic, total non-ionic, total net ionic process we learned in grade 11 rather than um, uh, the half reaction method we just looked at. So in this case, anything that's in ionic form, we show as free ions, and that looks like this. And then we cancel out the spectators. You'll notice that the nitrate ion, the NO3 one minus, goes in and comes out chemically unchanged. So that's our spectator. And we cancel that out on both the reactants and product side, and what we're left with is our net ionic equation, which corresponds to our uh, redox equation. And again, another method is the inspection method. Um, so again, this is the process whereby we pull down the copper, and we showed this in the previous page, but just to review, we pull down the copper atom on the left and the copper ion in the right, and we add two electrons to balance charge. So this is our oxidation half reaction. And uh, our reduction half reaction involves the silver ions on the left, they're bound up in the silver nitrate, there's two of them, being converted into two silver atoms that we see on the product side on the right. And the conversion requires the input of two electrons shown here. So like we did above, we cancel the electrons coming out of the oxidation and going into the reduction, and we add the two half reactions together, and we get the same solution we got previously. So again, uh, for these relatively simple single replacement reactions, inspection works just fine. But the non-ionic, total ionic, net ionic process is, uh, I would recommend it for something uh, a little more challenging than a typical single replacement reaction. So those are my introductory comments on electrochemistry. Hopefully, hopefully you found that of value. Um, do any homework you've been assigned in class, and we'll see you next time when we talk about oxidation numbers. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you.